before we have to close. Yeah, my name is uh, Santosh Rajan. Um, I don't have a job now, or I don't work anywhere other. Kind of uh, semi-retired, as you can see, I'm a little old programmer compared to all of you. I've been programming for about 30 years. Kind of did everything, then I decided what to do now, you know, like, you know. So I decided to write my own programming language, you know. So it's called uh, a Lispy script. You heard of it? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Well, it's, uh, uh, it's like, uh, how many of you know Lisp? Okay, uh, quite a few. So this is a Lisp-like language that uh, converts to JavaScript. So you can go to lispyscript.com. Uh, anyway, I'm not going to talk about the language and maybe I'll leave it for a half an hour talk sometime in the future. Uh, today, I just want to show it to you. <coughs> okay, this is the uh, source code of the Lispy uh, script command line uh, processor. So basically, you do Lispy slash h, it gives you help, Lispy slash v or display test out uh, ls it will compile and you know your usual command line processor this is the so source code of the command line processor written in lispy script now if you know javascript and if you know node you will be able to understand this code if you read the uh, you know required dot yeah you can understand all this var fs equal to uh, required uh, fs how many of you know, know node.js you know if you know node.js you will understand this code uh, now, what is interesting here, say something called do monad, maybe monad. Can we can you zoom a little bit for the people in this? Command yeah. plus. Command plus. Is it going up? Yeah. Okay. So, um, uh, how, how many of you know about monads? Have you heard of? Well, actually, monads are uh, something, you know, it, it came from the language called Haskell. It's supposed to be something very esoteric. I myself had, did not have any experience, uh, or I didn't have much experience with monads. But what happened was, uh, when Lispy script uh, supports uh, macros, uh, Lisp style macros, so I had some people say that the Lispy script macros are not powerful enough, like other this uh, so I thought if I could write uh, monads in Lispy script, then that would be proof to all of them that Lispy script macros are uh, really good and powerful. So I wrote uh, so Lispy script supports monads. Okay, basically monads are uh, abstractions. They allow you to abstract computations. Maybe I'll uh, explain that uh, in some other in more detail. And they also allow you to abstract a program structure. Now, when you are writing a command line processor, usually what you do, you will have some kind of loop. You will have some if statements and uh, switch statements. You need all that, you know. But uh, in this case, you'll find that there are no loops. You'll see the code. If you look at the code, it's all straight. You don't have to understand the code, but uh, you will see I'll just tell you, see, the whole thing is straight. You don't have to understand the code. Just see here it's taking care of the flag. Here it is taking care of the uh, running. You see, it takes care of the flags, slash h, slash v, slash r. Then it is uh, taking care of the input file. It's taking care of the output file. And then it's, uh, it uh, compiles the whole thing. And then it uh, runs, compile and run. You don't have to understand the code, but the important thing to see here is that the whole thing is in a straight line. There is no loop. You're not going around in circles. There are no if statements. You have uh, the you have uh, simplified the program structure itself. If if you have written a command line processor, you will know 
you know, you will have to go into some loop and all that. In this case, using this maybe monad, what we have done is uh, we have uh, s uh, streamlined, simplified the uh, command line processor and what it's doing in one straight line, it is eliminating all the possibility. Okay, the user type slash h, then print the help. If he slash, uh, slash slash v, show the version. Okay, or if he gave a file name, then compile it. <coughs> so it's all in one straight line. That's what monads do. So, um, so you can go to lispyscript.com and I hopefully I'll be here for more meetings and uh, you know, if you're interested in learning more or maybe I can give, uh, explain more or teach more about uh, monads uh, next time. So that's it for now. Any questions? How long have you been working? Uh, on Lispy script? Yeah, I started, uh, I've been working on it on and off. I started last June, worked for two, three months on it. Then I was working on something. Then maybe I worked a total of six months on this, on and off, but it's been almost. Do you have any application for this? Application? Uh, I have my own, and uh, yeah, it has a few people who are using it, who have done some stuff. So the compiled JavaScript obviously can run in the browser and stuff. Yeah, yeah. You can even even uh, the, there is a try it page. I'll show you the try it page. If you go to the try it page, it actually runs on the browser. It it will compile and. <coughs> this is the try it page. This is the code, and it will show you the compiled code. So whatever you type on the left side gets compiled on the, uh, and this is the output JavaScript. And uh, it is uh, readable JavaScript. It's not like your, like uh, how many of you know Clojure script? <laughs> yeah, Clojure script uh, compiles Clojure to JavaScript, but it comes with a lot of uh, extra baggage. You know, it comes with 20K of code along with the code, and it's very difficult for you to, but in this case, you will see that, you know, each line is corresponding there. Console.log, Hadoop script, there it is in JavaScript. So you will see that, uh, you can see your code. <coughs> uh, I have a question. It's like a, uh, something uh, that if uh, you write a list script and you include a file in your uh, HTML page, now the whole page is coded in the list script and you include a file that compiles it and can we use it directly? In yeah, the no, no, yeah. You, see, it's not a good idea to compile it in the browser. You load it, the user is anyway waiting for you. So, and then top of that, you're adding comps. So, it's better to compile it, pre compile oh, but it. And for some, like, uh, uh, does, uh, does uh, it support this feature at, as of now? Like, uh, you can, uh, like, small block of code is written in the recipe script, mm -hmm. and we send it directly on the browser. It compiles. Yeah, that's what is happening here. Yeah. That's what is happening. You type some code here on this side, it gets compiled here. So, uh, it's so like the service is on the client yeah, side. Yeah, it's here. Now, suppose I type something here. Uh, the compilation is happening in the browser? Yeah, yeah. No, in this particular case it is. But you don't ha it doesn't have to. You can compile it on the server also. So this line, I already, uh, actually I already injected the code here. Instead of having to type it out and show you. So basically this is as good as me typing it out. Yeah, uh, but so uh, it's compiled. Uh, uh, question is like, uh, this is like compilation, you are showing the output. But if uh, uh, this JavaScript uh, like uh, runs, uh, on uh, like if I write some you want to compile and run it yeah, yeah compile and run it on the browser itself yeah you'll have to eval or whatever yeah oh. it's javascript in, in which language is the compiler is that in Lisp script sir? no it's written in uh, javascript oh. so it's running the huh? so it is so it's running the yeah. yeah it can be written in Lisp script also it's already <coughs> in, uh, yeah because it's it, it's compiled it runs in javascript only it has to run in javascript so, yeah, in fact, uh, the Jeremini Ashkenaz uh, asked me, why don't you, because CoffeeScript is written in CoffeeScript itself. So, when he, I had written to him, he saw this and he said, now why don't you write the Lispy Script compiler in Lispy Script. <laughs> yeah, but I thought, now it's working fine. You know? <laughs> you know? So, now if I write it, then I don't want to get into more trouble. Like, I think you just so. the community to write. Yeah, I mean, there are so many guys who have wanted to write, and every, every second guy says the same know thing. If you do all the obvious stuff, uh, yeah, yeah. Then, uh, you don't leave any opportunity yeah. for people to step in. Yeah, but, uh, no, and what do you gain, I mean, other than the 
sorry to say, bragging rights, you know, that it's... Self-hosting. Uh, yeah, self-hosting, it's called a self-hosting language. So, uh, yeah, let's see. Many questions? So how do you debug this? Like, is there any support for debugging? No, no, you can use okay. any debugger you want. You can, because this is JavaScript. So, so basically, it's actually, it's you, can, you, can, you can use source maps? Yeah? Do you have source maps to help? Yeah, you, you see, basically, this is Java. Now, you see here, console.log hello lisp script. Yeah. You are just calling a function. In a lisp-like language, everything is a function call. Hmm. OK, so you are just calling JavaScript function. So if you are debugging, you are just calling the debugging function. You just include so the debug function. It's, it's only a syntax difference. It is not a language in itself. It is a language in itself, because no, it, it has macros. Like, um, OK, so you do have a lot Everything, of it's got uh, max. I mean, I'll show you the features it's got. I know I'll show you the features it's got now. OK, here it's got macros, a list style macros. It's got uh, tail call optimization. It's got uh, callback sequences. Uh, callback sequences are used, you know, in Node, you get into this loop of uh, calling, calling, you know, and getting deeper and deeper. Uh, using list script callback sequences, you can write them in a straight line. Like I showed you, you know, you can write all your functions, uh, callbacks one after the other, and it will call them. Uh, then it's got templates, it's got monads, it's got some basic unit testing. Unit testing is there, and uh, it's browser compatible also. It's got tail call optimization. I don't know if you're familiar with the JavaScript problem of tail call optimization? Yeah, OK. The, the problem in JavaScript is that uh, if a function recursively calls itself, it will eventually blow the stack. If you, uh, you'll, it'll crash your uh, program. So like in a normal browser, if you're calling recursively calling yourself, let's say, 10,000 times, it will uh, uh, blow the stack. You will get the stack overflow or whatever. So uh, in this script, uh, we have a certain loop which overcomes this. So you can even call it a million times and nothing will happen. So that is uh, date call optimization it's got in this script. Good. Thanks, Sandesh. Okay.